Okay, after... After, like, ten minutes, this finally happened. So, I was wrong in the last part about how this rare game shows up, and it's kind of weird. This area that we're in right now, Temptation Eluded, this area has a 25% chance of being full of Wendigos and Pit Fiends instead of, um, of Strikers and Imps. And if it is, then you need to defeat all of the Wendigos and Pit Fiends and the rare game will show up. And you pretty much can't miss it because I think the rare game will just spawn, like it'll just jump down in front of you. But that's how this area works apparently. Just setting Ash's gambits are to ice vulnerable and not party leader's target because otherwise she won't do anything if the party leader doesn't have a target. Yeah, the problem with, like, chance-based spawns like this... Oh, nice, we actually got a successful poach-in. Unfortunately, uh, it was only worth a strip of maggoty flesh. I mean, that's a new loot item. It might actually be worth some decent money, but, um... Yeah, with chance-based spawns, it's very hard to tell whether you're actually doing it wrong or whether you're just getting unlucky. Which was what was so frustrating about this. Is that, like, Blizzaga or something? That looked really powerful. And sleep. I. Uh. Ash, could you just hit Pinello in the face? This is not going to do much damage, I don't think. Yeah, not a lot. Should probably a few more left, and then all the other rare game in this area require the Hunt Club, which we can't do right now. Get the feeling that the rare game is going to end up spawning uh, all the way down here in this sort of, um, in this nice, happy looking area. Yep, there it is. It's a really big, um, oiling, I think, called a Cubus. I don't know if it's meant to be like a thing on, on Incubus or anything, but that's what it, it, it is in Japanese as well. Cubusu. It's pretty vulnerable to Blizzard. And its magic isn't doing really a ton of damage to us. Yeah, I would like put Fran's gambits on using oil, but just so many enemies are immune to oil, and there's no faux oil vulnerable oil gambit. Yeah, immune to poach. Now there's one other thing that I can do in the cave uh, palace. So we're trying to get to that little tiny strip of land in Mirror of the Soul, and there actually is a waterfall puzzle, but in order to do it, you need to walk around the um, these areas and the Falls of Time in the right order, and according to a map I have, we need to start here and then head south. Should probably put Flea on. And we still need to go all around this part until we, yeah, I think reach the far end, the very far end. Go in here. The course of the waterfall seems to have changed. From here we head straight up into the closest exit. And then go all the way around into exit number four of this. So it would be, okay, this exit. And then from there we would go straight down. course of waterfalls has changed into this. Oh, the enemy damage really adds up when you're not fighting them. And then from here we have to run around to the second exit. 
And now from here, we go to the second uh, exit of this area. So not that one, but I think this one. Yeah, this one. And from here, we leave this area by exit number three. You heard a door open in the distance. Yep, that is uh, mission accomplished, because now we can actually get over here. And now is this one of the important... Yes, the Technic for a Thousand Needles. That is, um, and here are the Sakura Sayazuri. So these are actually the two main rewards of doing this in the Zodiac Age. This is on hit... Is that just objectively worse than the other ninja sword I already had? Yeah, I think it's objectively worse than that, so that was kind of, um, kind of not great. But a thousand needles is actually a decent technic. It's 1,000 guaranteed damage and it can hit flying enemies. But in the original version, your real reward was in here, through the Pilgrim's Door. Which wouldn't open unless we had done that full sort of puzzle. This chest... A Megalixer. That's the only reward from this in this version. Oh, we can get back out through here too. Yeah, I guess the Pilgrim's Door would have actually had a hint on it if we'd examined it um, from this direction maybe, but... Yeah, there are a lot of weird guide dangits in this game. Now, in the original PS2 version, you would get uh, either the Eager Blade or the Korga Blade, which were uh, also ninja swords, like that Sakura weapon we just got. Also, if you are playing the PS2 version, do not have a diamond armlet equipped when you open that chest, because otherwise it will contain a knot of rust, and you'll basically have wasted this entire um, puzzle, because the chest doesn't respawn. And as you can see, getting back here, I stepped on a lot of traps, uh, as you can tell by all of the statuses. Yeah, this place is actually pretty dangerous if you, um, aren't careful. But heading up this magical elevator, which still works, thankfully. Fothy is getting a good stretch in while we're going up. I feel like I've seen a ring like that in some other area in this game. But there is a gate crystal here. And those um, strikers seem to drop teleport stones, so that might actually be, um, uh, yeah, a good place to farm. And now that our explorations in the cave palace are over, let's head into the territory of the Empire, finally. Well, we're already in the territory, but the capital city of the Empire, finally. Looks a little bit more run down than you'd expect. Smells less like a capital, more like a sewer. Even empires have need of sewers. The runner from Arcades proper pools here, those who lack papers to live in the city itself. The mighty who have fallen, and the fallen who would be mighty. Their eyes never leave Arcades. I guess it must be a lot nicer than this place. Oh, to be sure. Arcades reeks of a different filth. Let's be off. We can follow our noses to Draclaw. Yep, this is old Arcades. And it is kind of an interesting point uh, showing that Arcades and Rabinaster are not so different in a way. This place also has its own sort of slums district.
Oh, well, we already make way more gil off of, um... Uh, off of, you know... Hunting monsters and the like. And as for chops, well, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be a little important soon. Oh yeah, that ancient worm, we will fight that much later. Now, I probably have a ton of loot to sell thanks to both these stealing sprees, so let's, uh, get that out of the way. 37 naggedy flesh, wow. Okay, what did that give us? Exquisite ring. We've got money to spare, I may as well buy these. Opal ring. Forked spear. Trident. I think that's worse than a lot of the spears I currently have access to. Warped blade. Diamond sword. Interesting. Iron... F uh, yeah. Burnish protectives. Shielded armor and ice shield. Okay, yeah, I think those are way earlier, uh, from stuff way earlier in the game. Oh, we can buy, uh, Bacchus's wine from you. Cause one ally to attack mindlessly with weapon in hand. It, it inflicts berserk status. I think it does work on enemies, too. And it is guaranteed, even if you have shell status, I may as well actually get some of those. It's also faster to cast than the actual berserk spell. Oh, we can also buy remedies. Getting the sum of those for the road might not be a bad idea, especially now that we have most of the remedy laws. I'll, I'll take 30 of those for now. And we can't really get any decent weapons or items. We just made that guy give up even more money, but maybe he can make a profit out of all that loot, possibly. So yeah, vulgar is, I believe it's an archaic way of saying peasant. I wonder if that's actually where the modern usage of the term vulgar came from. Yeah, this stuff about information being kind of the main currency around here, that's going to be important too. It looks like this guy has, has like the remnants of a tattoo on his chest. Hmm, yeah, well, word travels pretty fast, even people around here already suspect Vane. And the Senators, yeah, so regarding those Senators, I've, um, I've heard people say that it's very rare to have a Senate in a video game that's not evil. And it is true, like, Senates have a pretty bad, um, pretty bad reputation in fiction. I would like to see one that's not evil, but it's, it's quite rare. That guy's voice sounds kind of Scottish. Okay, seems like that guy used to be a, the guy's father, I mean, used to be a businessman. Well, yeah, but I guess not here. Swiping tidbits of information in the street, they say things like that a lot. Oh, don't worry, we only steal from enemies in the field. Okay, so I'm guessing that means uh, you're a con artist. So, he said something that was highlighted in uh, yellow. So, did they buy this cockatrice expecting the cockatrice equivalent of the whole GameSpot stock thing to take effect in Arcades? Yeah, there's still quite a bit more to this place we can go through. Yes, always be careful of, um... Uh, I just saw an exclamation mark. Yep, there's a chest around here of contracts.
Um, okay then. Is that considered slavery in this universe? It probably is. Hmm. Unless he's just lying. Yeah, like, look at that. That almost looks like New York. <laughs> or any other big modern city. Oh, there's the Moogles 8. Yep, guess they actually have been enslaved. That's, uh, that's terrifying. But let's head through here. Because our destination is the big city itself. Or, you know, the second half of old Arcades. I forgot there was a second half. Now, the stuff that's coming up, I'm kind of dreading it because it's probably going to involve a lot of cutting around the place. Bag a coin. Lucky man. I think some of the people who have yellow things in their text are um, marked with different names. Hmm, okay then. Beasley and the guy with the bag of coin. Can we do anything about that now? Doesn't look like it. I vaguely remember how this section of the game works, but I'm... Still not completely sure, and in fact, I don't think we're even at the point where it takes effect. Just another Arcadian Volga, and the exclamation mark is showing up, which means... Yeah, I'm guessing most of these chests aren't really worth much. Fairy with an AE, so it's even more fantastical. Okay, Ministry of Law in the center. I guess if we find out any information about that, we'll try and let you know. Seven gil. Ah yes, it's the reverse of, um, of that song from Mary Poppins. Bad luck will rub off when you shake hands with him. Not of rust. We're almost to another save crystal. Yeah, the city doesn't really seem to be particularly safe these days. And why is that exit in orange? Oh, because there are troops here. Credentials, uh... Yeah, it doesn't look like we can get in. And uh, this line is a reference to uh, Final Fantasy VI, something that's said about Locke, I think. Uh, we already saw someone who did that literally and it didn't work out for them. <laughs> oh yeah, that's nothing. Huh, I wonder if this line changes if you haven't talked to them yet. So, yeah, this segment of the game is a series of fetch quests involving information. You hear some good information, you talk to the right NPC who wants that information, 
and that lets you progress. Now, where was Beasley? Was he in the first area, or was he here? I know he was on some kind of corner. There he is. Yeah, so I actually know that, because there's a guy over here. No, that's Worry Grandson. Where's the one who found? No, it's you. Lucky man. So yeah, in general, anyone who has um, something in their dialogue that's highlighted in yellow... ...is part of this quest. Yeah, I guess we have to talk back to you. Ah, well, those guards are kind of dumb leaving their posts. like a fish out of water I'm just checking out the city even if it is the Empire you've changed Vaughn you were always marching to your own beat almost like you were impatient even in a good way maybe it's because I've seen more now <laughs> never imagined I'd ever come this far away from home Hey, Lars is here in the city, isn't he? He's a tough one. I wonder how he's doing. You always were a soft touch, Vaughn. You know what's amazing? I always thought I'd go my whole life without meeting people like the Princess or Lord Larsa. And here we are in the capital. I know. It's a little over my head sometimes. Good, Vaughn. You've come to understand the difficulties of serving royalty. Hey, I'm just along for the ride. That wasn't a complaint, was it, Bosch? <clears throat> right. Let's get moving. Hey, don't change the subject. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even Vaughn and Penelope were self-aware of their role within things. So, yeah, we are in uh, Arcades now, and this is the place that we, although the background doesn't look as impressive as it did for the PS2 days, I guess, but um, we're in the place that we actually saw during a cutscene. And this is a point where... Where things get... Yeah. You'll see. Oh, no more Balthier for a little while. I mean, I'm sure he has connections in this place that he needs to see, but um, I remember this person with the parasol. In fact, a lot of people with parasols are here. Mama's farce. So, pretty much everyone here has their own problems that they're talking about. You want to open a boutique, um, you want tickets to the farce. This is going to be important to something. You have wealth, but you're lacking something. So you enjoyed the loot. Now I forget exactly when this whole thing starts up. And you seem to be some kind of architect. Are there any? I know that there are shops in this place. The music here is pretty distinctive. It's like a variant on the um, Imperial theme. Or I guess you could say Imperial March. Philosopher of Cuisine. Okay, well, we'll probably need to remember that for a bit later. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, okay, this is, well, um, it's a gambit shop, which means, unfortunately, there's not that much for me to do here because I've already bought all the gambits. In the original PS2 version, I believe, in the Cave Palace, you can actually find, um... Yeah, it looks like the gambits are, like, actually cards. You can actually find gambits, um, to target weaknesses in chests there, but they're all purchasable, um, in this version of the game. Ah, the Chops Master. Okay, this is important. What are Pine and Sandalwood Shops? So, Chops are basically a status symbol in this place. And we actually need a few in order to progress the story. Yep, so no chops at all. And that's probably a bad thing uh, when it comes to blending in in this place. And let me just check, and yeah, pretty much nothing. But it is important we know where that uh, shop exchange place is because we'll be using that eventually. So there's going to be, like, a quest for chops here, though I forget exactly where when it starts. I know that at least some chops are mandatory, and in the PS2 version, they actually, um, had a lot more. Like, in this version, they cut down the number of chops you need for the story, and, uh, my Joy-Cons are drifting, that's really annoying. Yeah, if you ever see Vaan making weird movements in the overworld, it's because I think my Joy-Cons are actually drifting. Oh, we can buy X potions, and they're not very expensive either gonna actually take a few because they're quite good against undead as you've you've seen okay so it seems like there's a chop master in basically every uh, regular store here just getting my bearings around this place and I'll be forcibly getting my bearings a lot more because, um, like I said, the chops quest is partly mandatory, but they lowered the number of chops that you actually need in, um, in this version of the game. It's kind of like the Triforce, um, chart quest in Wind Waker HD. So yeah, there's a commercial, um, aerodrome here, which some people are wondering, oh, why can't you just fly one of these to Arcades? Well, um, you'd probably have to, like, sign your name somehow, and then that would probably, yeah, result in you being caught quite easily. And there's more to the city through this part. Yeah, every time you talk to one of these people, they get a different name tag. And that is definitely important. Like, for example, Faded Star. So it might be useful to talk to everyone here just to get their name tags registered, because they are going to be helpful for the Chops quests. Ah, oh, yes, there is a weapon shop around here. Okay, I'm guessing we need to connect you with the Faded Star. Failed researcher. And a dropped instrument. Track and field, um, family? And yes, the cabs. So, should I check out the weapon and uh, armor shop first, or should I just do this? Because I think this is where the quest actually starts. Yeah, so you need three or more chops to ride the cab, and in the original game, you actually needed more. I like the way this guy's model looks, though. <laughs> I 
This guy's like the old NPC without voice acting, but an actual theme song. <laughs> yeah, let's pay you more. So in other words, in this place, people, um, do good deeds just to make themselves feel better about themselves. And it's a status symbol. And that's exactly what we're gonna have to do. New employee broken instrument. Okay, words of encouragement. Yeah, they only cost a million gil or so. Commit this tale to memory. So now we have words of encouragement. Now, where was that failed researcher who talked about losing an instrument? There we go. I think this should be the right guy. Retail, uh, relate the tale of the words of encouragement. Well, he took it the wrong way, but we get a Pinewood shot from that. So, uh, now, now is the question of whether we need to talk to the, um... Whether we need to talk to you, or whether we need to talk to... The Aspiring Starlet first. Yeah, Path to Stardom, there we go. Commit this tale to memory. And you could have just talked to her, she's like, literally right next to you. I'm pretty sure... Is it this one that will work? Through experience do you learn. <laughs> and with that, yep, she's gonna write a novella about her adventures. Ex-researcher. Okay, so you're probably the recipient of information. Time to leave. Okay. Now is this what we need to link to this guy? Oh, half your wages. Okay, no, that's different. Nope, let's... Yeah, you can only have one tail committed to memory at a time. So is this going to work on you? Yep, that does work. So, yeah, we're now free to ride the cab. That's the first part of this quest done. However, you can actually do more in order to go all the way up to a sandalwood shop, which I think is the highest you can get to. And I actually did get that in the original game. It's really mostly for bragging rights. There's an area of arcades you can only access with a sandalwood shop, so I'm gonna go for that uh, in this playthrough. So, um... Apologies if I'm gonna actually have to go on a big thing of side stuff, but... Anyway, Zephyr Pole, no one can use that. Already have a Burning Bow. Or a Calcum Dirk. I already have Ninja Swords that give slow, though. Penetrator Crossbow. I just got a Diamond Sword out of the, um... Although it's worse than what Bash currently had. Out of the, um... Bazaar. Guess I can get a really, really expensive Crossbow for Pinello. Okay, and the rest, although on hit stop is not bad. Hmm, maybe I could get one of those, but... I mean, I can try this on Ash for now. It is a bit of a boost to magic power, though it doesn't have any, like, effectiveness. Um, doesn't buff the effectiveness of any magic. Now, protectives, okay. Yeah, these will give Vaan more HP, which I guess I can, um, equip to him. More speed from the officer's hat. That is a significant boost on Ash. 
It also gives strength. Mystic Armor gives strength. That's actually not a bad idea for... for Bushi. Yeah, I'll take extra magic on Ash there. Yeah, weirdly, Bolthea can use the Platinum Helm and Platinum Armor, but Bash can't. Crystal Shield. It doesn't have as much evade as some shields, but it also gives magic evade. I'm actually going to take three of these, one to cover every party member who can equip shields. I already have one Platinum Armor in the inventory. I guess I can equip that, so that's a pretty considerable strength buff. And I'll get another one of those just in case Barsh wants to use that later. I suppose I can get another Platinum Helm so that Barsh can use that later. And on that note... I actually think, um, yeah, I haven't spent, uh, LP in a while. I think I might as well do that. And then after that, I'll probably end this part here and spend the next part just focusing on, um, getting chops. That way I can, uh, have all of the optional chops contained in one... You know what, maybe I should go for Thousand Needles so somebody can use that. But yeah, I I've taken care of all the required chops here, and then all the optional chops will be next time. Yeah, Sight Unseeing is not the best, but at least it's, um, something. Vaughn doesn't really need Gambit slots, but, I mean, I guess he can take that to use for, um, things like... Things like Thousand Needles on, like, flying enemies, let's say. And I suppose since he doesn't really use magic, Infuse could be useful for him. Yeah, I really haven't been going the Gambit slots on Vaan. I have just enough to get a low Mystic Armor license, though. Taking Vaan exactly down to zero LP, which is kind of rare. Now, what was I... I, I know I had a plan for Bolthir. And I think that plan was to get Element of Treachery here. Stamp used to be useful for, like, passing over um, positive statuses to allies cheaply. I think in this version it's not quite like that. Okay, so I can get Element of Treachery here and give myself three magic laws. And... That also unlocks those on that license board. Yeah, I I'm gonna go for the... 120 LP one, and I believe that means that everyone in my party now has all three of their quickenings, and it makes it kind of is fitting that Bolfi is getting his final quickening now. Yeah, well, I can, I guess I can give you Libra. Now, I believe I had a plan for you as well. I've got those potion laws. Oh, there's a swiftness down there. Yeah, I think I'll actually go through these licenses here. Goggle mask making you immune to blind is nice. Okay, there's swiftness. Don't really have enough for it, but I can take uh, more light armor. Now, Bash, yeah, you... Platinum helm, platinum armor. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. But the... Oh, obviously I want a battle law too. There is something else that I want to do with Barsh. Cleanse and S sooner. I mean, I can make you like an alternate, like, status curer, but... Uh, why not? I'll get that. We'll be entering a laboratory soon, and I get the feeling there'll be a lot of enemies that use status ailments in there. But what I really wanted to do is to grab these licenses. This is probably the main reason Barsh was so behind Vaan in HP. That and light armor. And now Ash, like, she's already got most of the black magic, unless there's, um, a black magic shop in town. There actually might be. Although there's a swiftness relatively close, so I might as well take that. Future-proofing for higher tier spells. I already have Toxify. And now... I was going to do something with Pinello, I think. Alright, that was it. She doesn't have, um... Vanish and Balance yet. And I kind of want Balance. Uh, maybe Ether Lore. You could use more Gambits because you're a caster. That is going to be useful. It gives you, I think, two conditions to have higher magic power. Suppose I can equip some of the higher levels of armor with this. Remedy laws are always useful. 
Oh, let's grab that swiftness. And you can now use Platinum Armor. Yes, always good to keep your haste user protected with the best armor available. Shielded Armor, Equip, Protect. It does lower your defense a lot, but on the other hand, it gives you permanent protect status. Although Pinello can also use that. I'm gonna see how he does with the Shielded Armor. Oh, you can equip the better crossbow. More defense, less vitality, that's probably fine. Oh, actually, that is considerably better evade than most things, and also 10 magic evade. I'll definitely take that. I think I'll keep Bolthy with guns for now. And with that, I think I will leave you here in Arcades. Next time, we will be dealing with more people's problems and getting more of those chops. See you all then.